Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, our show, David Sponheim's Cooking Show with Sarah. Hi. We are going to be doing a apple crisp today out of fresh Washington apples. And Sarah is peeling them right now. And we picked up these apples uh, on a sale, 75 cents for a whole bag. Yeah, it was pretty amazing because they're starting to go, but that's a perfect thing to do with apples, especially this time of year when they're, they're starting to fall off the tree and they're like, oh, there's too many to actually eat. You can make this apple crisp and you can actually freeze it and pull it out. You could save it even for Thanksgiving or Christmas. It'll last in the freezer, no problem. And then you can pull it out and it's just great anytime you want a little hot apple pie kind of thing to warm you up. Especially as we're getting, I don't know about where you guys are, but ironically, the last couple of days have been really cool, uh, cool weather. Well, today was pretty warm, but the previous two days were actually pretty cool. It was feeling like fall and, you know, who, who doesn't love apples and cinnamon, especially warm apples in, in the fall time. And vanilla ice cream add vanilla ice cream to it yeah especially you can do that in the summer anytime so that the vanilla is nice vanilla ice cream is nice and cold to serve it with so yeah so there's serve it by itself or with that do we have a bag of open walnuts yes we do i'll go get it okay so we're gonna do actually i just pulled up on our tablet a recipe from the food network so it looks pretty good with um, for apple crisp and it calls for nuts. You can use pecans or walnuts, uh, oats. It calls for it calls for a uh, flour and it looks good. Let's just say that. Okay, somebody said, David, are you true to our country? Absolutely, one hundred percent American. United States of America. Yes, we are true American, Sarah and I. We've been doing this show for eight years uh, and. We have been unable to get any mainstream media attention. It's not to say I haven't tried. We actually had interviews in front of our house by ABC. They interviewed me, Cairo TV, but they now are claiming they never came to my house. Somebody said that they contacted them for uh, information. They said they never, they don't even know who I am. And I wrote uh, Cairo TV asking them for uh, some information and they refused to respond to my email. So. If you're wondering if the American people are being censored, Sarah and I are the living proof that censorship is really, really, really bad in America. Our country is virtually in the throes of corporatism and they've controlled our, the essence of our government through the money, the purse strings and through the buying of politicians. So I did a, a video many years ago that got me massive uh, appeal around the world. And now I'm a household word in a couple countries, David Sponheim. So people are coming into our show on a nightly basis and looking at what we're doing and realizing, wow, the sensible people are not running. They're not out there. They're not getting any mainstream media attention. And it's shocking really to know that our country is slipping into this, the throes of corporatism of every single election. And we're fighting it person by person, vote by vote. Yeah, so doing a, a blackface video, which I did, Sarah didn't necessarily approve of it, but I did it because I needed to get exposure because I was making fun of the worst president we've ever had. And what's really disturbing is how can anyone impersonate a black man if they're not black? So the Democrats are accusing me of, of racism. And I've never said a racial slur in my life. And I'm merely trying to make it clear that he's not even helping the inner city. He's not helping the people of black people who are living in, in ghettos. He's not doing the damn thing. He's just a puppet. And that's the word I, I did. And I continue to stand by that. So let's take a look at uh, what kind of, these are gala apples, I think, or Fuji? Yeah, these are actually, I think they're gala. Gala or Fuji. Which is fine. Usually sometimes people don't use gala in um, like apple pie because they're a little soft. But they're fine. It's, uh, I like them. You can eat them straight up or they're fine if they're baked. They make a really nice applesauce too. They do, yeah. Okay, and then we have a, an awesome apple slicer David could get out. Oh, I do? Yes. You mean the, the quartering? Yeah, the quarter. 
that's called an apple slicer. Oh, that's what I always called it. Do you always call it an apple slicer? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that cool? I would call it an apple slicer. I've had this since the 1950s. My mom gave this to us. So. So you want to slice them and yeah. I can move the camera over to you? Yeah. Let me, let me switch it off with the mic. Go ahead. All right. So, and then I gotta get down. So, so, those are the apples. Cool. I'm gonna go right through the middle here and just go push down on it. Unless you wanna peel and I no, can I don't do want that. Do you wanna blend these at all or are you gonna put them in the crisp hole or do you wanna? I just want them sliced like that and then cut them in half from there. Oh, again. And take okay. the core out. From all right. Now, some people use food processors like this one I have here. Oh, I suppose you could do that, but that almost ends up with an apple sauce rather than an apple crisp. Okay. And as far as the walnuts, you don't want to blend those. You're just going to throw them in their hole. Oh, you could you or... could definitely blend the walnuts. Oh, with that food crumble, processor. Crumble the walnuts with the food processor. Okay. So we'll put some crumbled Can walnuts. Can we put in this there. video? I'm going to move the order of the videos. So. I think that's better. Yeah, and this is what great people do is we cook. Well, we save a lot of money by making our own desserts and things. It's all about living efficiently, living below your means so you don't go in debt, which debt is a problem for a lot of people right now in our country. They're, they're defaulting on their car loans. I mean, you wouldn't believe all the car loans that are going to default pretty soon. So there's a lot of people concerned about their, uh, their jobs and if you are, you don't want to dig into your capital to buy food. You want to just live efficiently and produce a good quality, healthy meal for your family. That's kind of what we do. We well, make sure we, we you're live. You're going to get rid of those, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah. That was really easy. I know. Isn't that apple slicer a great invention? Yeah. You just don't want to put your hand in there and slice your hand. Cool. And Sarah's doing that difficult time. Now, we're going to be cooking this in a corning an item we used last week anywhere for the zucchini lasagna a couple weeks ago actually so we got that going for us which is nice I made this before right sir i made something like it cool uh variations you know it's a pretty easy thing to do because you do the apples basically apple cinnamon sugar a little lemon juice to keep the apples fresh i don't know if we have that but i have a little lemon juice yeah and then um that's pretty much and then uh oatmeal butter flour kind of as a topping and you can make it as simple as that or as complex as you'd like it i do like this recipe i just pulled up which calls for nuts too because nuts and apples always go together well Washington apples are not radioactive. They're usually grown on eastern Washington, so they actually have two mountain ranges to protect them from the radiation. If they were grown in western Washington, where I live, I might be, you know, some are grown it over here, but I mean, they grow all over, but they do, yeah. A, a lot of them, the ones that are exported for market, usually grow in eastern Washington. Yay. These are, uh, these are what are called either Fuji or Gala. Yeah, these are, they come in different types, Fuji or Gala. We are in apple heaven up here in Washington, so we got a whole bag. Fuji's like a, are good, but I like Gala better. Like a two pound bag for 75 cents. So you can look around in this area. In your area, you probably pay 3.99 for a two pound bag. And some places here charge that too. It all depends on the apple. And speaking of apples, so there was this big thing about apples in uh, China recently. Have you read about that? Yeah. That um, China is going to, wants to export their apples to America. And in order to increase their apple exports, they actually shut down for a while U.S. imports of apples to China. And the apple growers in, in America, they say that they want to have the... They, they're okay with importing apples from China as long 
as they're able to export our apples to China. And their idea behind that is there's so many different varieties of apples. So they're saying that we can, you know, we can send them varieties of apples that they might not be growing in China. You know, it's not really fair two-way trade. It's not even. Hey, I gotta, um, I'm gonna ask you uh, real quick if uh, I can line this with butter. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna take a, a pat of butter. Yep, butter's always great. And I just put it like that, and I just use that and rub it against the bottom, like okay, that. And I've got one more apple to peel. Kind of rub it around all the way around the sides. Oh, I don't know they, if they can. Matter. I'm, I'm fine. You don't need to. The whole concept, real quick. All right, great. Oh, they're asking you to move to the people section. Oh yeah. On well, live, Dave. Yeah, Miss Scruffy kept us off of that. Miss Scruffy makes it impossible for us to broadcast over there. She she's threatened us. Yeah, not really a, in a violent way, but just you know, it's it's against the rules to not broadcast or to broadcast. She just reminded us of her rules. Her rules say that you have to broadcast. A person has to be on the camera talking to the chat and interacting with the chat in order to cast in the people section. Is that correct? Well, why don't I go to their Facebook page and read it verbatim? I mean, why really, whatever. Anyway, I seriously, I mean, whatever. I mean, I can't even believe that they're picking on us, and it really blows my mind that we even have to deal with this. Okay. Little, uh, yeah, that's just ridiculous. I mean, seriously, I mean, they're singling us out. And I understand last night they had some people showing their body parts online on the people section. So technically that's not actually being on camera. I can't understand why they would allow that. Are they even monitoring their channel? Anyway, we're making a wonderful apple crisp today. Yes. I will pull up the recipe in a moment. Can I put these apples in the uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. And I don't know if you want to cut them anymore. Um, you cut them in half. You're you're good with that size. Well, I, my whole thing is the less effort people put in, the better. Okay. So I think apples will just meld into themselves. They'll all be beautiful. Right. And my hands are clean, of course. how easy that was. I'm going to take some of that butter and probably melt it on top of there. Okay, then it calls for sugar, a little cinnamon. Okay, sugar. How much sugar? Um, sugar, well, a quarter cup in with the apples. Quarter cup. A quarter cup. And that doesn't is not including the brown sugar or no. Okay, a quarter cup of re regular hard sugar. Wow, okay. Quarter cup mark is right. There. All right. Sugar. I have lemon on out. Yeah. Right over here. Okay. Okay, you so take it from there. Quarter of sugar. One lemon juice. Well we'll just add lemon juice. Oh, they can't see that. All right, I just poured in the sugar, pour in some lemon juice. I'm not sure how much. Remember, you have to speak a little louder. Oh, yes. Nobody can hear you. I'm sprinkling some lemon juice on my on my apples. Okay, sprinkling lemon juice. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> that keeps them fresh and gives them a little tartness. And then I'm going to add sugar. and one half teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm going to get out my handy dandy measuring devices. So a tablespoon, a, it's a half a teaspoon. Yeah. For some reason, uh, <laughs> yeah. flour. Flour. Trying to get Sarah in the camera and I can't seem to do Don't that. Don't worry about getting me in the camera. No, I mean I don't want you to be in the camera. Every everyone wants to oh, see. Oh, go you. back. There you go. One right. Oh, so now I'm doing two. Oh. Is it leaking? No, it just had a little bit on top. Two tablespoons of flour. That's two tablespoons of flour. Now this is unbleached flour that's non-GMO from 2000. We bought this uh, in preparation for Y2K. Now the awesome ingredient. Cinnamon, oh yeah. So let me get your cinnamon. We have this really incredible spice store that we go to often and they have cinnamon there. Would you like some of that incredible cinnamon that we get at the incredible spice store? I now, there are two types of cinnamon, you know. There are two types of cinnamon. One is real cinnamon, I guess, Ceylon. And one is, um, yeah, is the, like cinnamon, cheaper cinnamon you get. Oh, that's true. I bet a little nutmeg could be good. Ooh, a cinnamon stick, yes. Have I used it all? Guess what? I found it. Found and you it. have it. It's from a, a, an actual a special store that has cinnamon. Brown Ceylon cinnamon. Now this is the cinnamon that is not necessarily the one that prevents diabetes, but it has some of the qualities that... It's ironic, but the cheap cinnamon you get at China has a better effect in preventing diabetes. So if you see cinnamon on sale, buy it. It's probably from China. They make great cinnamon. That's my cinnamon. And then what you do with these is you just simply... Are we going to use brown sugar, by the way? Yeah, there's two things. There's your filling, which this is basically your filling or what goes on the bottom. And okay. then there's your crust, and the brown sugar goes in the crust. Okay. So this is just your kind of your filling. So you just kind of mix that around to kind of create the apples, sugar, and the flour, and lemon juice. Nice, you're, you're moving all that around. Cinnamon, flour, lemon juice. And of course the apples. Would you like to put a little more butter in there to make it more flavorsome? You no, know, the butter is going to melt down from the top and then it'll get in. Okay. We would make our own brown sugar, but uh, we were using it out of a container we got for a ham one time. We picked up a, a b container of brown sugar that's still good from, uh, I think it was 2006 we had that ham. All right there you go. There's nice and coated. Nice. And that looks like a good, good filling. So this calls for equal parts of brown sugar and white sugar. I think so. So All you, right, now let's do. So that we set aside. Yeah. You know, almost we could finish the lemon juice. Is that too much lemon juice? Take a cup of walnuts, roughly chopped. Okay. I'm going to pour the cup of walnuts into the container. A whole cup is really nice. There we go. Not nice. I love walnuts and I'm going to use my Hamilton Beach food processor, which you can get for about 10 bucks. Look around. I've had this for a while. I got rid of all my, my really expensive food processors. I got this, this one because it's made, you know, by an American company and just fantastic. It does the job. Why, why get something really expensive and takes up a lot of space? Is that a good 
good mix? I think it's roughly chopped. Yeah, that's yeah. good to me. Okay. All right. I'm going to put it so, on top? No, you're going to put it in here. Okay. Uh, All right. So that's our... I wonder if I might need to bring this closer or something or just tilt this down. Okay, so that is our walnuts. They look good. And then we're going to put in... One cup of flour. Of that plastic measure, but oh, here it is. There it is. Like you want one more cup of flour? Yep, one cup of flour. This is in the topping. This is our non-GMO Western family flour from way back. You get that. Here's my cup of flour right in there on top of the walnuts. Okay, good. And then I'm going to do one and a quarter cup of rolled oats. Well, say rolled oats, but we're just going to use quick oats. It's okay because it's baked. It's not a big deal. No, you don't have permission to do that, 146. You have permission to do that to yourself and or to go for a walk or something. Go for a jog. That'll make you feel better. So one and a quarter. Let's look at this. This is up. I like using this. For some reason, I just like, I prefer using this one. So see how I just push, I'm, Push that in right in there and measure out my oats. That way if they spill over, it's right into the flour. It's not a big deal. So there's one cup and a quarter cup. Okay, and good. Quarter cup of rolled oats. Next, what we need is brown sugar so one cup of one half cup one half cup of brown sugar and I'm just gonna use this about half a cup I don't know if this will turn out strange because that doesn't actually look like brown sugar to me like kind of ham glaze but we'll see all right and then cinnamon, a little bit of salt, and butter. More cinnamon. Let's go back to my... And the cinnamon they want... One teaspoon of cinnamon in the topping. One teaspoon of cinnamon. My hair looks black in this light. In this light, yeah. So here's my awesome cinnamon. cinnamon. That's great. All right. Cinnamon. All right, great. I have cinnamon and then butter, right? I'll put the butter in. Butter cut into it calls calls for a lot of butter, a lot of butter. But I'm so I might not use as much butter because it calls for eight tablespoons, and so that would be like a one whole stick of butter. I don't know if David does that because that's it. Why do I keep the cup in the mixture when I measure the other ingredients? I do that. That's not that much, a stick of butter. I guess considering the amount of ingredients here, I guess you're right, that's probably too much butter. All right, I'm going to close that up. I'm gonna first 
Before I add the butter, it calls for a whole stick of butter. Oh, I good. To... A whole stick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll pull out another uh, half stick. So that's okay. one third of a stick right there. I try to use more, uh, whenever I get a recipe like that, I try to use more. Like oil or something? Olive oil. You can replace butter with, uh, I've got some, some strained yogurt. That's an interesting option. Mm, but goodness. there's nothing more fattening than 100% butter. In fact, Julia Childs, you know, the famous cook, said that God made a little piece of heaven and he called it butter. And he gave it to us. So I'm going to give you a little piece of heaven right here, Sarah. Whatever, whatever you want of that. And as well as take use this first, you know. Are you going to render it down any, you know? No. You're just going to put it in their hole? Yep, that's what. I thought it called for liquefied. No, you can read the recipe. Oh, okay. Like. So Just, it's, it's going in there straight up. Yeah. I just don't trust uh, hydrogenated oils or... Hey, watch your, your language there, buddy. No, that's actually just the lighting. And yeah, my hair looks good. 100% great hair. I believe the Democrats did pay you. Yeah, I believe you did steal my signs and you feel guilty, but you don't realize that the mojo is set. You can't help it. No, it's 100% great hair, not gray hair. <laughs> what are we making? We're making apple crisp. Are you unable to read? Some people are, yeah. I'm gonna start the... Uh... All right. Yeah. What about whole wheat? Do you want to put any whole wheat in there? I just put, oh. You just put regular wheat? Yeah. Oh, we're just going to go with regular wheat. No problem. Doing regular wheat. Uh, no, this is not a dinner for 10. I have another uh, video that I was going to upload and I could play it for you uh, toward the back end of this show, or I think I'll just upload it. I bet they are desperate. Well, then I'll add some more butter or I should. Sarah likes to bake. Yeah, she's a big baker. I, I'm the cook. Now, I put together an amazing short video. I can play a little of it for you. This is what I put together. Go it's ahead. six meals for $2. Play it for you. Hi, I'm David Sponheim. I'm going to show you how to make a really affordable dinner. Two dollars can feed six people. And I'm giving you these tips because these are ways I've survived economically over the years. Uh, I used to be an advertiser and uh, when advertising got really slow, the retail sector kind of shut down. Companies like JC Penney's and other companies struggle even today. I decided just to cut back on my expenses. So I started cooking extremely affordably. And what I've been doing, I'll leave that a mystery for you. Uh, so as you're waiting to find out <laughs> how to save, how to make two, six meals for $2, you'll be quite shocked when I do play that for you. I'm going back to the cooking show. I didn't interrupt it. I had this in the bag in case Sarah was not here. I had a 15 minute cooking show all set up. I know they really just want to watch you, Sarah. All right. All right. Butter in here. You got a lot of dry butter in there. <laughs> I've never seen dry butter like that. It's anyway. going to, it's going to. Oh, it melts. It's yeah. a crumble. It melts. And that's it. Yeah. And then bring this back over. Pour this on top. This is it? Yeah. That's wow. it. And there's coconut, or there's no coconut in there. If you want coconut, you can put it No, I, I, the fact you got walnuts is great. That's protein. 
Yeah, awesome. Just that easy. It's going to be incredibly good. I'm going to just throw this in the microwave and and then at the very end of the microwave session of about, would you say 15 minutes on high? 10 minutes on high, unless you got one of those super microwaves. And then you, you let it sit. And you throw it in the oven. And then you throw it in the, in the, in the oven for, well, gosh, let's, let's experiment. What do you say we follow Sarah over there to the microwave and see what she wants to do? Bring this video out. Yes, normally it's in the oven, but whatever. We're doing it in the microwave ahead of time to save energy, and frankly, no other cooking show does microwave cooking, so we wanted to be the only to one. Be the microwave king. Yeah, I used to microwave all the time. It's perfectly safe as long as you don't, don't put your head in the microwave. Then it could be really a problem. Yes, no heads in microwaves. All right, shall you go back to washing the fish? So that concludes our, our dinner. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that beta is having some sort of an acid trip. Wow, he's freaking out. He's freaking out. Look at that. He's he's absolutely he's chomping at the bit. Should we feed him? Could I just reach over and get him one little pellet he Absolutely. would love to eat? There we go. One little pellet. Aye, uh, one little pellet. No, I, yeah, I'm not radiated. The microwave is completely shielded. Melting, I'm melting. You got him. He just ate his piece of food. That's the biggest food he had all day. Three pellets I'm giving him now, Sarah. Three pellets he's up to. He's growing like crazy. Hey, welcome to uh, the show. This is, uh, I would like to sing a little uh, song in dedication to the apple crisp. We did it our way. We were forced to use Y2K ingredients and low cost apples. We did it our way. <laughs> my cheap now how many pellets should the beta fish have honestly uh, like three one, two, she's been saying one a day and i'm we've got a vanilla ice cream we're going to put on top of this five minutes in the microwave let it all sit kind of press it down and then crisp it up in in, a, in an oven really welcome to the show and it's ending right now we're going to open up the, the pre-show in the other room I'll be right back. I'm going to put my fun and crazy and wild and crazy tie on tonight. We'll be back shortly, folks. Yeah, Sarah's going to entertain you right now while I get everything going in the other room. And I'll tell you when to stop it. But this is the end of our Apple Crisp segment. We'll stay broadcasting on Vaughn and other channels. Thank you for watching.